capacity, budget, equity, inclusiveness. These are all words, but when they are turned into action with motivation, with inspiration, these words catalyze change in the lives of millions of people around the country. While we were building up our skills in women in governance, um, we discovered that budgeting and planning in Nigeria was not as equitable as um, it should be, leaving behind a large number of the Nigerian population, the women, the children, boys and girls, people with disabilities. So those conversations began during our women in governance interventions. Equity as is defined, is actually the concepts of being fair and impartial to everybody. This is especially so important to make sure that every member of the society is valued the same. And so the contributions of men should be valued the same as the contributions of women, persons with disability, minority groups, vulnerable groups, and those who are excluded from the mainstream. They all must have a voice. They all have a role that they are playing in the society. And so the idea of equitable budgeting is about allocating the resources that are available to the society in an equitable manner. It's about distribution. It's about knowing the needs of each person or each category of people and making sure that these needs are met, particularly to mitigate conflict. The equitable budgeting work began as a collaboration between the Pearl Arc Public Financial Management Team, the other pillars of Pearl, and our gender and equity sensitivity work within Pearl. So those two teams got together and realized that the realistic budget guide that we used for so many years to support government partners could be improved if we brought in the angle of equity. Women in leadership positions, as research has shown, are very lonely at the top. And so the Women in Governance Initiative helps to build their capacity helps to provide them with those tools that they require to function better. We started identifying the women in the locations where we worked, the, the ones with all our change agents. You didn't simply get support just because you were a woman. You got support because we thought you had the will and you were in a position to make a change. So we started developing programs that would help to meet the needs that they themselves identified. The PS for the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development was identified as a gender champion and a change agent who, after a series of interaction, true mentoring, training, and shadowing, led the coordination and organization of trainings for other officers from the different uh, ministry, departments, and agencies. Sabia so State became one of the places where we had a very vibrant permanent secretary who moved from Women Affairs with her own agenda of helping domestic violence and moved to the planning ministry with now a much greater agenda in a very central role to help her entire state. The story started way back in 2017 when Pearl came to me and uh, they wanted to know the gap in my ministry that I would need them to support me technically. And I was the permanent secretary minister of women affairs then. And issues of gender has always been a problem. Getting people to understand that gender is not just about women. So we now started with Pearl, and at the end of it, it's now dragged 
into series of technical support. I was asked to pick from the line ministries by Pearl for training. I requested for it. And for me to get that number from line ministries, education, health, agri, care, women affairs, uh, environment, uh, public utilities, that will be part of this um, technical support. I had to move out to my colleague in planning commission, not knowing I will be here one day. I participated in the training workshop on equitable budgeting organized by Pearl Arc in collaboration with Abia State. Uh, before we came to equitable budget training, there was other activities that we, I was part of that culminated to the equitable budget training. I was part of the Abia State Gender Champion Team uh, because it was from gender mainstreaming that we talk about how can we have equitable development in society that now brought about equitable budget training. With this gender advocacy team, we did quite a few advocacy. We had to go to the commissioner for information. We went to the House of Assembly. We went to the head of service and we told our story. We came to the planning commission. We just asked them that all we needed is for them to understand that there is need to include gender issues in all our documents, our policy documents. When I came to the planning commission, I had a stronger request on Pearl to train all the budget officers in all the MDAs. One of the key things that we learned from the training was that for you to have an inclusive planning or development, you must bring everybody's interest. You must accommodate uh, everybody's interest in your, in your plan. And the shortest the distance to having a good plan is the budget. We convened another meeting where the directors of the planning departments, the planning officers from across the MDs, the budget officers, were together where we developed a new plan, a new, a new social development plan for Abia State uh, for 2020 and we translated that into the budget for 2020. And that was when we started um, equitable budgeting and thereafter we went out, we sent out a circular that every MDA in addition to the regular budget that that is IPSAS compliant, must present an equitable budget. When we came, we changed the template of budgeting in the state. We have IPSAS. We now also have equitable budget template. And that equitable budget template is so explicit and can, you can easily interface with it. It makes budgeting for us here easier. There is a project in the Ministry of Agriculture on um, poultry cluster. That uh, project is mainly touching on youths of Fabia. We call it in Sulu poultry cluster. My name is Owen Achimobi Polinius. We are nine in numbers. I'm number seven of the children of my father. My family is poor. I hardly ate three square meals per day. I got the news of this program and it kicked off in 2020. So since then, I've been benefiting and me that hand, lay my hands on three square meals, I can afford whatever I wish to take. When we started, we were giving 250 beds to rare and after I finished my production cycle was superb. Now um, I have something, I have raised a little capital from myself after the series of cycles that I've run and I've started a little poultry pen house at my backyard. My name is Ngechi Emmanuel. I come from the family of 12. I get five children in my house. I'm doing farm. The dry season, I cannot get anything to again. I stay at home. As I come here, get job here, 
they doing the job. As the job I'm doing is the poultry farm. So as as I get the poultry farm, I mean, have the salary here. That that salary I'm taking to training my children and give them food. food. My name is Mwabuko Obina Joseph. After graduation, I've searched for a job all to no avail. So when I learned about uh, the AADS, I applied. We run an uh, interview. I was among the uh, lucky people that sketched through. Most of us we have been assigned to form a corporate body. We've done that. We are also told to get from 5,000 capacity beds outside the cluster since the, co the cluster cannot contain everybody. I am a youth from Abia State. Governments have been releasing projects, but it doesn't reach us. But this one, 2020, I'm one of the beneficiaries. There is a road the governor constructed that cut across three local government areas. And this road is mainly for agricultural um, zone of the state, cutting across Ubingwa local government to Isiyalangwana South local government to Sisioma local government. And uh, ending up at the express road close to a popular um, village and suburban market. We call it a Kabara market. That means that um, the villagers can move their goods from the farm and from maybe close by villages without um, so much struggle to the market. I because I am 56 years of age now. And uh, as a disabled, I, am, I was not born disabled. My parents told me that I, this happened at my year of three years. Some few years ago now, like two or three years ago, I found that uh, some hospitals are now taking care of uh, people very well. And uh, if I go to hospital, I am sick. They do make us to take to take care of me, not minding the amount. This time around, the government has tried to put some rules in order that's helping me in particular to be rolling around with my tricycle freely. That's the major thing that I'm enjoying. I'm a family man, a family of six. You can imagine. I have a shop, I have a handwork. I'm an electronics technician. I do repair electronics of all kinds. I, I lost my shop, but now the government is trying to help everybody, including people like me. I just got money for a new shop, and I believe things will change. We have our partners in Borno State who are interested in equitable budgeting, learning from and alongside our partners in Abia State who have actually begun to carry out uh, an equitable budget in their state. That is the beauty of the Women in Governance platform. Insurgency of over-educate has created a lot of gaps in the equitable distribution of facilities within the society. Hence, the need to prepare all our budgets in an equitable way. And then we started connecting outside of Abia. Abia State started working with Borno State. It was a beautiful collaboration between the North and the South. And again, it was women, permanent secretaries. So women helping women, then the men joined. I met some interesting people like Mrs. Nena from Abia State, who so far in Nigeria has succeeded in implementing equitable budget. And we have been using her as a role model we have been in discussions with her. When I was in budget, it was much easier uh, for, for me to uh, hash all the ideas about um, uh, equitable budget. 
But then I was transferred to water resources. And even in water resources, I have tried to reflect equitable budget in a uh, water policy, draft copy of the water policy, as well as in a, in a budget. Uh, in our water policy, we are, we are proposing things like house-to-house -house connection and even clustering connection. Mostly it is the children and the women and their daughters that go to fetch water. If you bring water closer to them, you see you have done equitable budget. Nana was able to apply the equitable budgeting tool to the 2020 Abia State budget, making Abia State budgets one of the best in terms of inclusiveness, equity, and gender balance. The equitable budgeting guide describes practices that Nigerian states must follow to make sure that their budgets are equitable and that the impact of policies on the different categories of people are well understood. So it describes that very clearly. The guide provides a step-by-step -step process to follow for each state or even the nation to make their budgets equitable. Within the budget planning and preparation stage, it is the medium-term sector strategies or MTSSs that offer Lime Ministries the first core opportunity to engage with civil society, to identify the needs, and particularly the needs of women, youth, and any marginalized groups. The MTSSs will typically be broken down into a number of programs and projects. Each of these programs and projects should contain activities and should document the outputs outcomes and impacts. When the budget is made, it has to go through some approval stages. One is the, the stage of um, ESCO or Executive Council approval, where the governor and the, his commissioners and principal officers sit to consider the budget that has been submitted uh, to them by the Ministry of Budget and Planning. So the task here to ensure that the budget is equitable and inclusive is that the ESCO and governor should look at both the process leading up to the proposed project and indeed the numbers in the project reflect equity and inclusiveness. During budget implementation, it is important that procurement practices offer opportunity to firms that are owned by or employ women and other marginalized groups. When it is implemented, it has to be reported. During reporting, the, the budget should report in an equitable manner as well. It has to be disaggregated to various levels of gender. Without the guide by Pearl, I don't think we, we wouldn't have been here. We wouldn't have been talking about gender budgeting. Just as we have started we have included an uh, equitable budget in the Ministry of Water Resources. I would want in future other MDAs to do the same. My future plan with the knowledge acquired from Pelt's technical support is to build a strong team of planning officers from level 8 to 16 that can stand at any point to develop policies and programs 